My name is Alex Duda. I grew and scaled a restoration company from my dad's garage to over eight figures, and now I'm on a mission to help you grow and scale yours. In today's episode of Albi After Hours, we're gonna be talking about why training for the soft skills is one of the most important things that you should do as a restoration contractor. So we had the honor to go earlier this month to the Oland uh, Management Associates Executive Summit. It was actually a very, very cool experience. We're blessed that they um, were able to um, restart this event after COVID had shut it down for about two years. And they've been doing this event for probably close to like 17 years now. And basically it's college level soft skills training for um, restoration contractors. It was really cool. There's probably about 200, 300 uh, restoration contractors. They all gathered at Kent State University. And uh, there's like a keynote speaker at the beginning. And we learned a lot from that keynote speaker, more on that in a bit. And then afterwards, we broke out into um, different classes and restorers were able to, you know, go into either basic and advanced classes. And the cool part is they actually partnered with Kent State University and they offer um, a college credit slash diploma after you actually um, finish those classes. So it was great. But that's not really what I'm here to, you know, rave about. What I really kind of want to talk about in this episode is that um, as restorers, we often train on the very black and white technical things, right? We do a lot of trainings for the ICR CS 500. How many air movers should you place? How many DHU should you place? Some of us get more advanced and we take concrete, you know, classes on marketing and we take concrete classes on how to interpret our PNL. and We hire consultants to help us with the black and white. However, one of the things that I think we don't do a lot of and as an industry we should do more of is those soft skills. Because at the end of the day, if we want to grow um, a large and successful organization, we want to make sure that our people develop and those soft skills are probably the most important. The one thing that we had right off the bat um, when we started the event um, last week was the keynote speaker. And this guy was Jim Ryerson. He's a 55 year old sales professional and sales leader and keynote speaker. And he was diagnosed uh, with ADHD. And he was talking about how, you know, in today's society, we've actually gotten our uh, attention span to be less than that of a goldfish because of the fact that we consume so much information through things like uh, pings on our phone, pings on our iPads, information on social media, we're not spending time reading books and things like those. So he, he gave us a very helpful tips on how we can actually manage distractions and become effective as, as leaders. And I could totally relate with that. I mean, when I see a squirrel, I'm like all over the place. So um, that was an awesome thing and, and just leading the conversation into training your employees on how to manage with ADHD, how to time manage, I think is one of the most important things that nobody really talks about. Um, and I definitely think everybody should. Um, some of the quick tips, obviously you wanna to come to the summit to, to get everything and I'm not Jim by any means, but some of the quick things that he taught us were, you know, like the focus modes um, within your iPhone, iPads, or tablets where you can eliminate who can call you at certain, certain times. Another tip he gave us is blocking off times on calendars and basically blocking everything off. Um, and another helpful tip was writing things down. So if you write things down and kind of offload things off your mind, your mind is less overloaded. So um, that was really helpful. Then um, that first day, I actually took a class um, with one of our co-founders, Shamoil, on strategic thinking. And that was all about how can you get yourself as a leader outside of the tactical moves, the day-to-day, -day, and spend all of your time in the strategy, right? And what does strategic thinking have to do and how you can interpret different pieces of information in different ways, depending on how deep you get into. And, you know, the whole class was developed to work our brain muscle into thinking more strategically. And there was a lot of examples given there. And that's something that nobody really talks about. And I think is, it's very crucial if you want to lead a um, restoration company. And then the second day, we had an awesome class. It was very hilarious on emotionally intelligent teams and how most people um, think intelligently and are, have a high IQ level when it comes to facts and, and knowledge. However, a lot of us lack that emotional intelligence and, and the role that emotional intelligence plays within our current work environment. So um, the instructor was great. She, she taught us a lot about things like those. I, I think key takeaways were just to understand the, the different types of people and how their minds work. And oftentimes um, people react differently based on how they're just wired and how they're programmed emotionally. So, um, but again, the purpose of this video here is I think I wanna stress the importance of those soft skills. 
How can you grow and scale a restoration company if you don't have the ability for your leaders to grow? And is leadership really black and white? Is that something that we can learn um, from a textbook? Or is that something that we have to continuously develop? And I think the latter is true. Here at Albi, we put a lot of emphasis at, at developing our people. We uh, read books every single week. We go to events like the Owens Management Summit, and we put a lot of emphasis on that because that's the only way we see ourselves growing and scaling as a software company. And we did the same thing at Romex there when we were growing and scaling a restoration company. I hope that you guys find this information very useful. Um, if you like this kind of content and want to hear more, you can like, subscribe, or comment down below. And as always, you can always reach out to me at my email address below um, or add me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and um, other social media platforms. Looking forward to seeing you guys at the next Albi After Hours episode.